family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. We are surrounded by phenomenal women in our community. And one local photographer has been going above and beyond to highlight these women once a week. That one-year project is now two years and going strong. Amy Boyle, thank you so much for joining us. And explain to me a little bit about what you were looking for when you kind of set out on this journey. I'm Amy Boyle, creator of this project, 52 Phenomenal Women, which began in September of 2018. For 104 consecutive weeks, I profiled a different woman, sharing her personal story through portraits and her own words. My goal was to shine light on the positive impact these women make in society, giving all women permission to be phenomenal right now. A simple question, what would happen if once a week we highlighted someone we knew or didn't know and shared their story of why they're phenomenal right now, today. Because I do find a lot of women have a hard time raising their hands and giving themselves some credit for what they do. And a lot of us do a lot of things. Hopefully the seed was planted at this event. Many of you might've been there. It was a women's march in Chicago in 2017. What was projected to be 60,000 strong ended up being almost a quarter of a million. Rally for women's rights packing Chicago's Grant Park as hundreds of thousands of people turn downtown into one giant show of unity. That energy, that vibe, that power, that positivity stuck and has continued to stick. When I would ask people, do you want to be a part of this? And I, I'm not phenomenal. You must have other stories to tell. Why would you tell mine? And I said, because. And they look at me and they kind of, they're like waiting for something. I'm like, it is when you take the time to find right now the why you do what you do and the what you do, it all becomes clear. Each person that's in front of my lens is brave. They're brave enough to be seen, brave enough to be heard, brave enough to be bold in sharing their phenomenalness, and brave enough to be a champion for other women. We begin in the city of Chicago as we reconnect with three remarkable women whose stories have inspired many. We'll revisit Sarah Harris, a woman of immense strength and courage whose original feature focused on her life-changing trip to Korea to reconnect with her birth country and heritage. We'll explore how her journey has shaped her identity and life's trajectory since 2020. We'll also follow the transformational journey of Dr. Kimberly Lloyd, a Chicago police officer who founded the nonprofit organization, We Got You Covered, which supports and empowers African-American boys. We'll witness the growth of her organization and the lives she's touched since her graduation with a PhD in education, all while serving her community as a Chicago police officer. Finally, we'll delve into the work of Joyce Martyr, a leading mental health advocate whose compassion and impactful work in the field of psychology has reached thousands. We'll explore the ongoing efforts to break down the stigma surrounding mental health, as well as her latest role as an internationally published author on mental health and financial fitness. As we revisit these incredible women, we aim to showcase the resilience and strength within each of them. We'll celebrate their personal achievements and explore the wider impact their stories have had on women across the nation. Phenomenal impact underscores the importance of sharing personal narratives to inspire and empower others. When I look at the phenomenal women, I see some common threads. I see resilience. Many of the women who you've interviewed have been through some challenging life experience and they've turned that challenge into an opportunity to be of service in the world and to help others. I think that's part of being a phenomenal person. Resilience, positivity, passion, and courage really stood out to me as characteristics of your phenoms. My name is Sarah Harris. I think that was right after I had come back from Korea on my first trip back to my homeland where I was born, but just had never learned anything about the culture, didn't know anything about my history. And so it was during the period where I was trying to reconcile how to bring that information back and bring it into my normal life and, and also at the same time how I can pay it forward. Like for me, connecting with the, the Korean adoptee community has really been a strong thing because there's comfort in just knowing that you have a shared history with people, even though our journeys are all very different community really helps me 
feel inspired to help other people that are behind me and just trying to help them get to the answers faster. I think the thing that I've been trying to share with people at the conference and just in day-to-day -day life is that mindfulness can really be an empowering tool for people to use. I've been using guided meditations, I've been using silence, I've been using sometimes just a sound bath or different chimes and um, and it, it, it is a practice. It's something that people have to work at doing regularly, but it helps. I was really struck by Sarah's story being adopted and realizing that she had some questions about her identity and her adult life and then going to Korea and connecting with other adoptees with similar experiences and going through reclaiming her culture and her past. When we can take our areas of challenge and work on healing and learning, then we can serve as a lighthouse for others and show them how to do the same. My name is Kimberly Lloyd, Dr. Lloyd now. When I think about the educational journey that I had, it initially started not at the master's degree, but with the Chicago Board of Education, and they did not pay for school. I've got to leave here because I want to finish school and I couldn't afford it. I left and became a Chicago police officer. They have tuition reimbursement. I knew I wanted my doctorate, but I didn't want to be in just any kind of program. And then DePaul had a cohort with the FOP, which is the Fraternal Order of Police. That's full circle with the educational piece. It is coming to fruition. And sometimes it's slower than other times. Um, the easy part would be to give up. The phenomenal part comes in when, in spite of having to work, in spite of going to school when we had the city going up for grabs, in spite of having 12 hour days. I'm glad it's done. You know, I'm Dr. Lloyd now, and, and that's great. Moving forward, we need a component inside of Chicago Public Schools so that our kids can read. And I, I think it's major. While it may look small to others, I know that that's major for, um, we got you covered. The next steps will definitely be applying for grants. It'll be um, fundraising. But what I know to be true is the demographic that I'm seeking to serve have so many other issues along with that that I have to address those issues. I can't act like, I just want you to be able to read. No, I want you to come to school. I want you to have clean clothes. I want, if you need a haircut, I want you to have that. So there are a lot of different components to it that I'm realizing as I go into schools and I see the needs that are there. When the kids have their haircut, the boys in particular, how they move a little different. They're not as aggressive because there's a lack of things that they don't have. Basic things, clean clothes, shoes that don't have holes in them. That's a lot to deal with. And then you're expected to come to school and be totally involved in what's happening in this classroom in terms of your education, and especially after COVID. One of the women that you interviewed, Kim, in her statement, there was this paragraph written by a fourth grade boy talking about what it felt like to be illiterate and to not be seen and not be heard and not be advocated for. And that was so powerful to me, to hear from that boy, not a statistic, not somebody else talking about him, but to hear from him what that must feel like. And I just loved her for shining her light on that important need in the world. I admire her for that. That's what I'm talking about when I say taking your unique gifts and aligning them with the need in the world, with courage, with action, with innovation, with creativity. The world needs each and every one of us to be like Kim and serve in that way. Since you interviewed me for this project, so much has changed with the pandemic, and I believe one of the silver linings is the awareness of mental health. I finished writing my book during the pandemic, and it's now been published in four languages around the world, which I would have never imagined. One of the things that I love about your project is that you shine the light on these phenomenal women. And when we read about them, we become inspired. When we see that somebody like us has achieved something phenomenal, we can start to believe that that's possible for us. 
As we conclude this feature on the lives of these phenomenal women, remember that their stories are just a glimpse of the countless individuals in our own communities. By sharing their narratives, we ignite a spark of inspiration that reaches far beyond these moments. Thank you for joining us on this journey of inspiration and empowerment. Let's continue to make a phenomenal impact in the lives of women everywhere. I am phenomenal. 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 I can't say that. I'm much more than a pretty face and mini skirt. Hey, yeah. Bum, bum, ba da da da. Bum, bum, ba da da da. Bum, bum, ba da da da. Kiss you for God, then be behind you. Who you are. Kiss you for God, then be behind you. Who I am. I am a woman. A woman. Oh,